Hey you guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness. I'm really, really excited today for our guest because we have with us Mr. Rob Gutrow. He is an author, a medium, and a paranormal investigator, and he is here today to talk to us about how he is able to see pets in the afterlife and all of the paranormal investigations that he's done. He's here to share with us his experiences. He's written several books about it, and I cannot wait to jump in and hear all about what he does and all of the crazy experiences he's had. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Rob. Well, thanks for having me, Melissa. It's good to be here. I'm so excited to have you because I'm very much a geek when it comes to learning about all things in the afterlife and ghosts and paranormal. And I watch, you know, all of those shows and it's fascinating to me. So I'm very excited to pick your brain today and uh, see what your experiences have been. But before we get started, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you start doing paranormal investigations and, and also working with animals? Sure. Well, um, it, it all goes back to when I was a teenager. I was about 13 years old and my grandfather, who passed away seven months before, had appeared to me um, in full color and he scared the daylights out of me because I, you know, I was a kid. So um, I, I uh, told my parents afterward when they came home and my mother told me she had the ability, but she was afraid to use it. So uh, I wasn't I didn't feel like I was weird, but um, it, I kind of buried that until 2005 when a puppy of mine passed away. He was killed by a car, tragically, when his leash opened. And he started coming through to me. So he, re, he reawakened my abilities. And, and he taught, taught me basically how pets communicate from the afterlife, as well as people. So I, I do both. And, that, and that's where it is. And then I joined a paranormal investigation team, and I go into... Um, private residences and historic places with the team and we figure out what's happening and help cross the ghost silver. Oh wow that's so fascinating. So what have you learned from pets? You know a lot of people many religions taught that animals don't go to the other side which I always thought was really stupid but um, what have you learned in your years of communicating with pets who have crossed over? Well I've learned exactly what you feel <laughs> that yeah, so that that's actually my biggest pet peeve uh, when I hear people talk about animals. Uh, people will say the ridiculous thing that animals don't have souls, and that's stupid. Um, every living thing has a soul, and a soul a soul really is a memories, personality, and knowledge of the life that we live, coupled with the energy that we have within our physical bodies that transitions to the afterlife. So that's what a soul is. So um, they are all on the other side. They're all waiting for us. And what I've learned, too, is that our loved ones in spirit are waiting for them to help them cross over. So um, most pets, I would say 99% of the pets cross over because there's somebody waiting for them. And they also sense the energy on the other side, which is love and, and uh, acceptance. Um, in rare cases, I've only run into three earthbound animals, two cats and one dog, um, but that's very, very rare. And is that because you think that their energy is like of a higher vibration and so they just sense that that's where they need to go so they're not stuck here um, on earth? Yeah, they. Uh, as you know, uh, being, a, being a pet mom, that dogs can sense our emotions and um, love, faith, and hope are the strongest, most positive emotions you can have. And that's what the energy on the other side is. You can, people can call it heaven or paradise or Valhalla, whatever they want to call it. But because pets are sensitive to energy, they will go to a place that is good instead of staying on earth as a ghost where there's negative energy. Right. And what were the, when the, you had those particular cases that you dealt with where the animals stayed there, what, what caused those animals to be earthbound? A good question. Uh, so yeah. as, as near as I could determine, these, uh, these animals were, they, they were devoted to their pet parents. And when uh, they passed, they decided to stay. And after their parent passed, 
they still stay. Now, one of them, the dog stayed for a reason because the dog loves reading people in the afterlife. Um, the, the dog is actually, this. the story about the dog is in my book, Ghosts of England on a Medium's Vacation. Because I was in England, and I went to the museum of John Soane, who was a famous architect in Britain. And his wife had a little dog named Fanny. And that dog, it, as it turned out, as I started walking through the uh, the museum, there's a giant portrait of Mrs. Soan with Fanny on her lap. But I sensed the dog as I walked in. And so the dog s- stayed behind to be with his, his mom. When she passed, he still stayed behind because he loved greeting people at the door. And that's where I met him when I walked in. And I, I, I was astounded. And it confirmed that dog's ghost with everybody that worked there. Wow. That's so fascinating. And so you also do like ghost hunting, you do paranormal investigation. So tell us a little bit about that. Like what kinds of places do you visit and what do you do when you're on a paranormal investigation? So I belong to the Inspired Ghost Tracking Group of Maryland that are in the group. And what we do is we uh, address private residences, families who say they may have paranormal problems. So we go into private homes and investigate. And typically what happens in the investigations are the technical people go in first uh, on one weekend and then the mediums go in another weekend. We like to do it that way because the mediums can confirm whatever the technical people get, but the mediums are not told anything at all. In fact, we do not know even the um, address of the place until one hour before. So you can't do any research or anything. Exactly. (laughs) So that's that's interesting. And in a couple of cases, we've uh, been able to obtain police reports about things that happened in the past in houses. There's a uh, one particular case is called the double murder ghost investigation, um, which was pretty chilling. it was, uh, it, it was in a private residence where there were shadow figures and, and um, ghosts that were inhabiting the house uh, that were bothering the children, scaring the children. So we went in there and um, it turned out to be two women who were actually murdered by a, a man renting an apartment in the basement. Wow. Uh, and that was all confirmed. Everything we got was confirmed in that um, and we also got a picture of uh, the technical team got a picture of an orb where we we talked about one of the murders with the location of the murder. And in the orb, you, we blew it up and you can see the face of one of the women. Oh, wow. That's incredible. And so then in those cases like that, you also then talk, do you talk those spirits over into going into the light or how does that work too? Yeah, we, well, we try to um, because every uh, ghost and spirit maintains their personality. They can be pretty stubborn if they don't want to go, you know, you can't, you can't kick them. (laughs) Um, But in this case, the two women that were murdered in that particular home, um, they wanted to stay behind to, uh, to prevent anybody else from being uh, murdered. Um, I tried to tell them that their murderer was uh, in prison uh, but they didn't want to go. And we actually decided we would come back to try and cross them over, but the house was sold and we were not able to get back in. Oh, wow. And so were they, so these two women, did they think then that they were protecting the children, but they were actually scaring them instead because they didn't understand what was happening? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's so amazing. So what is your most fascinating case uh, paranormal investigation? Well, I would have to say it's that one. <laughs> um, and, and the reason being is that we, as mediums, we go in and we don't know anything about anything. Um, like I said, we, we find the location, one, we're told the location one hour before we get there. And myself and the other medium that went in there, Troy Klein, he, um, we both were drawn immediately to the basement. Um, and that's exactly where everything happened. Uh, and, and the other thing about being a medium is that I can I can hear, I can feel, I can sometimes see, mostly in my head, um, uh, earthbound ghosts or spirits who've crossed over. 
And these women actually shared their pain of death with me and with Troy. And it, it was it was quite awful. Um, but everything was confirmed in the police report that the manager of the team got later, which was even more horrific to me. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And I can't imagine having to experience that, you know, you having to experience what they experienced that had to be very um, heavy and, and emotional for you. Yeah, it stayed with me for quite a while after. Yeah, it I was, bet it did. Yeah. I bet it did. Well, so you've written several books about your experiences. So tell us a little bit about those. Sure. Well, I have three series of books. One is called Ghosts and Spirits, which is about either or. Um, and that includes haunted locations or spirits of loved ones who've crossed over, like my own parents um, and how they communicate. Uh, in, in, one, in one instance, um, I, I wrote a long chapter about how my dad helped me convince my, my own mother and my brothers that he was at his own funeral and his own wake. Wow, really? Okay. I've always heard that. I've always heard that spirits attend their own funerals, but you know, that's always something you hear. So how did your dad help you convince them? He did it with a handkerchief, actually. Um, so my parents were married for 53 years. And all during that time, my mother always said to my dad that handkerchiefs were gross. <laughs> she said, I don't want to touch them. I want to see them. She said, wash them separately in the washing machine. I don't want them in my clothes. So, so my dad used to do that. He was a good sport. Um, so during the funeral, when I was sitting next to my mom, I saw my dad um, in the church. And he, my dad walked around the church. And he came over. And he stood by me. And he said to me, um, he saw my mother crying, of course, and, and her, her tissues were falling apart. And he said, tell your mother to use my handkerchief. And, and I said, I, and out loud, I said, what? <laughs> you know, and my mother said, what, what? And, and I said, dad says, use his handkerchief. And my, um, I, I will never forget the look on my mother's face because her eyes just opened wide and her mouth opened. And she reached into her purse and she said, how did you know I had his handkerchief? And I said, he's standing right here. And I said, and he told me. And she was astounded because she had never touched any of his handkerchiefs in 53 years. Wow, but yeah, because they're gross, right? <laughs> yeah. But that day she put one of his handkerchiefs in her purse. Wow. That's so yeah, so, I, I always think it's amazing how spirits can get through to people and the signs that they leave for people. Um, what are the most interesting signs that you've seen that um, people get from their loved ones that they're okay and that they're on the other side because I know there's a lot of people out there saying I don't get any signs and I don't I don't feel my loved one I hear that all the time so how for the people out there saying that how would you maybe help them to see that yes you're getting signs and maybe you're just not noticing them or these are the ways that spirit get our attention sure there well there are a lot of ways that that spirits um, will communicate with us. And, and this goes for pets as well. They use uh, similar things. So um, they may audibly call your name. I heard my dad call my name on my birthday. Um, they, may, um, they may bring you to someone that looks like them. Uh, I talked to one woman who said that after her mother died, she saw a woman driving a car that looked like her mother. And she was so freaked out, she followed the car for a mile before she realized it wasn't her mother. <laughs> um, they may drop coins. And if you find a coin, uh, look at the year because the year is indicative of who it is. Um, in my book, Kindred Spirits, about our friend Ed, who passed in 1996, every time he's around, he drops a 1996 coin. And I have, I have more pennies dated 1996 than any other year. Um, they'll also, uh, they'll also lead you to a place that will remind you of them, or they'll find something that will remind you of them. Um, they, they can use feathers. Um, they can use butterflies and dragons. They influence things in nature. Um, birds are a very famous 
uh, way that spirits will communicate. Cardinals, for instance, um, they, uh, as I said, they may lead you to somebody that looks like them. And uh, in one case, my dog Buzz, who passed in 2005, did the very same thing on the anniversary of his passing four years later. Wow. So, um, yeah, and that happened. I was in Puerto Rico on vacation with my husband and we had to make a decision what street we were going to take. And I was nudged to go down one particular street. We'd never been there before. When we get to the end of the street, there was a dog walker with a Weimar on her. Buzz was a Weimar on her. And I heard Buzz say, Dad, do you know what day today is? Oh, wow. And then I remembered it was the exact day of his passing four years before. That's crazy. That's incredible. Yeah. I love that. I know my mom, she passed in January and I was in my backyard not too long ago and I've never seen dragonflies like in like so many of them in one place. And there were probably like six or seven dragonflies just flying around in the yard. I'm like, I've never seen, usually it's just one and you're lucky sure. to see two. And there was a swarm of dragonflies and there was also a hummingbird uh, sitting on the wire right there. And I thought, okay, well, you don't normally see hummingbirds that hot, like there was, it wasn't on a feeder or anything. We didn't have a hummingbird feeder around. And then dragonflies on top of that. I was like, okay, mom. All right. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot with nature, um, that that is one area where I'll get signs the most for me. Yeah, they um, they can definitely influence uh, animals in nature and animals and insects. Um, our dog Sprite actually sent us a yellow and black butterfly the day um, the day he passed, and the butterfly ambled around twenty minutes in the backyard around our other dogs, and the other dogs didn't bother it. Yeah, that's yeah unusual, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. That was the thing too, is my dogs also, they were flying right over them and they also didn't do anything. And, and they would have like, they, when squirrels run in the yard or whatever, they run and chase them and they weren't doing anything too. It didn't seem to bother them either. So that was, I just sat there with my mouth open, like, wow, this is so weird. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how you know that it's, it's really a sign from spirit, especially when your, your living dogs don't react as they normally would. Yeah, and I we had a very um, interesting experience with my daughter when she was probably two years old. I was rocking her at night and it was the room was dark because I was trying to get her to go to sleep and she was pointing and laughing and she said, Papa Till, which is what she called my dad's partner. And the next day we were over at my grandma's house and she had a picture of my grandpa who died before I was born. And she pointed to the picture and said, Papa Till. And we were like, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, oh, well, that that must have been who she was pointing to and was playing with her or whatever. So. Yeah, it's it's amazing, too, that I, I found that uh, many, many children can see spirit. Um, and that's because they haven't been taught to think logically. And 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 children are much more pure than than we are as adults because they're they're able to um just absorb everything and believe it um and but it's when we grow older and we get more cynical and we try to <laughs> we try to explain things away logically that we we miss out on the signs um, yeah but i will say that dreams are the most easy the easiest way that that people can uh, get signs from spirit so if um, if someone doesn't uh, hasn't seen any signs or don't doesn't think they have, ask the person or pet to come in your dreams at, before you go to bed every night. And usually over about two weeks they will. But uh, but does grief does block signs? So if you are um, a pet parent and you're grieving over the loss of a pet, that grief may block the dreams. But a pet or a person can go to another person and have them dream about them, knowing they will tell you. Wow. And, and that happened, one of my favorite stories is, a, is a, a, an email I received from a woman who said that she hasn't been able to dream of her dog that passed, but her husband has like three or four times. 
And she wrote me and she said, I've had arguments with my husband. I'm so angry with him that my dog is coming to him and not to me. And I, I had to write back and say, your dog is coming to him because he has dealt with the dog's passing and your dog does not want you to fight with your husband. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. So if you, so if there are people out there who maybe notice that their kids are seeing things or picking up or, you know, sensitive, what would you say? How can those people kind of encourage their kids without scaring them or, you know, I guess basically what I'm asking is, so we don't do it, what a lot of people do, which is discourage the ability and tell the most oh, an imaginary friend or you're just seeing things, but maybe they want to nurture this ability in their children. Um, I would say to, to just describe what they're seeing and um, that there are, um, our loved ones are on the other side and they're, they're, they like to come in and let us know they're okay. So it's just the way for, for our loved ones to let us know they're okay. Of course, conversely, if they live in a house that's haunted with an earthbound ghost, that earthbound ghost may not be nice. Right. Because people who choose to stay behind often are territorial. Um, and they don't like people invading their home, even though they don't realize it's not their home anymore. Yeah. But it's important, I think, for, for parents to just sit there and, and have a discussion of what are you seeing? What are you hearing? And, uh, and work their way through that and not discourage them unless they're afraid. Um, then they have to take steps to protect their child. Yeah, that makes sense. So... I'm going to ask you, what do you think people in spirit want their loved ones to know the most? They want uh, their loved ones to know that, that they are always connected and they're, they are there to help from the other side and they're waiting for them. Um, that's the primary messages that I usually get. Uh, there are some people, though, who have passed away that need forgiveness. And that's a big deal uh, because when we pass, we have an awakening on the other side about we get kind of a life review and we realize what we've done wrong. And that's why some people stay behind as ghosts, actually. Um, I have learned that people who are very strict in their religion, very devoted to their religion, are more afraid to cross over than people who are not um, because they think that, you know, maybe... I don't know, the slightest infraction, causing somebody to be angry, will send them to a bad place. And what I've learned from spirit is that there is no bad place. The other side is all love and peace. And hell was a, if you will, hell is a, a man-made um, idea that doesn't really exist. But I think that hell actually is being an earthbound ghost where you cannot communicate with living people unless you're lucky enough to meet a medium and you're stuck in one spot for eternity. That to me, that's like being in a prison cell isolation ward where you can't communicate with anybody for your entire afterlife. Yeah, that would be frustrating. And are there, so are there angels? Because I've always, you know, heard that there are people that come to get you that are there to greet you when you cross over. So are there people that are trying to get these souls to cross over and they're just not seeing or hearing or what, what happens in that case? Um, it, yeah, it, there are, uh, our loved ones on the other side are always trying to get the, the, the people stranded as earthbound ghosts to cross over. Um, but they really need, they really need the intervention of a medium uh, to help open, open that doorway to the other side. Um, and that's what we do at Inspired Ghost Tracking. We try to cross all the ghosts over that we can. But uh, it, being an earthbound ghost is just a horrific thing. And I have met many of them. Um, I went to the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona recently. That's my latest book. Um, and there are, I met 11 ghosts there. And they all decided to stay behind because they were, some of them were not good people. Um, they cheated at cards. They were ladies of the evening. They were uh, 
gamblers, they, they were alcoholics, um, and some of them were criminals. Um, so they stayed behind. And, you know, when you get a person with a personality that's gruff and tough, they're not really going to listen to you to say, okay, you can help me cross over. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you do like personal readings too for people or you strictly do the um, ghost hunting and, and crossing over of earthbound spirits? I, I do the, um, I, well, I do readings, but I do them only for pets. Um, and, and I have to tell you why I decided to do that. Sure. There are a lot of great mediums that do uh, in-depth readings for people. And um, the last reading I did for a person was really unsettling to me. Um, a woman asked me to communicate with her father, and she didn't tell me anything about him. But he came through and he told me he was an alcoholic and he was physically abusive and he would beat her and he did terrible things to her and and then he came through and he kept asking for forgiveness and i do all my reading with my email i don't speak to somebody um on the phone because i have to i'm not really uh i don't think i'm as uh developed as a medium as other people i call myself a medium rare <laughs> i'm not well done um so um, that reading was so unsettling to me because I had to type this all up and I sent it to her and I don't, I don't know her. I don't know. I, I didn't know where she lived. I didn't know anything about her home, nothing. Yeah. And she wrote me back and she confirmed every single thing. And I said, you know what? People have too many hangups. I just want to deal with love and pets. So because that emotionally drained me. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. does when you connect with someone and, and you're dealing with a lot of problems that that person is dealing with. It is very draining. I don't think a lot of people know that either. Um, and I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, people hear you're a medium or you're this or you're that and they want to immediately go up to you and be like, what do you see around me? Like I get people who do that to me and that's, I don't, I'm not a medium in that I see people who've crossed over and that kind of thing. I just can connect people's energy and feel like what you're feeling and tell you what's going on but also you don't want to be on 24 7 either so i think people don't really understand that or realize that that you know if we if someone's on their day off or doing whatever like they're not they don't want to go up to people and just start reading them. yeah and it's really emotionally draining and physically draining um so I, I do these readings on the weekends because during the week, I'm actually a scientist. I'm a meteorologist, which is why I explain the existence of ghosts and spirits with the science of energy. Um, and, and by the way, ghosts are earthbound. That's the way I define them. And spirits are the ones who have crossed over mm -hmm. because there are, there are differences. Um, and that's, that was actually the foundation of my first book, Ghosts and Spirits Explained. They both use the use energy. They use physical energies like heat, light, water, and electricity. But ghosts use negative emotional energy like fear, anxiety, depression, and anger. Those things fuel a ghost to communicate with you from wherever they're they're situated. And spirits use love, faith, and hope. So um, that's why spirits can go anywhere, anytime. Where if you're traveling somewhere, if you're on vacation, they can come to you but ghosts are stuck where they chose to stay. That makes sense. Well, this has been so interesting and such a fun conversation, but I have a question for you. And, you know, if you don't really know how to answer it, that's okay. But I'm curious, working with all of these um, energies and spirits your whole life, have you learned why, you know, we as human beings, what is our purpose in being here and what is this all about? I know that's not really a simple question, but have you had any insight as to why we come here and why we do this? The only thing I can think of is um, that we, we all have to achieve a level of certain perfection. Um, and, and that means learning unconditional love. Um, we really, we really strive to be like our pets, <laughs> really, ultimately. Um, and that's why sometimes we come back 
And, and when we come back, we are all connected to the people and the pets in this life. Um, and we will be in the next life. But I think it's all about achieving a certain level of like pure energy. Got it. And do you believe so when you say we come back with other people, so you believe we kind of travel and soul families? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we're all connected. Um, I, I look at being, uh, I look at it like a giant spider web and we're all part of that. That's a good analogy. I like that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on here. This is such a fun conversation. If anyone wants to get one of your books, because you have so many awesome books to choose from, or they just want to follow you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, they can just find me on Amazon.com. Um, just type in G-U-T-R-O. And as I said, I have three series, Ghosts and Spirits, Pets in the Afterlife, and On a Medium's Vacation. So if people are traveling, they can, they can check out some of the places where I encountered ghosts around the world. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And if you don't mind, I thought maybe before you left, we could pull a card for people um, just to give them a message before we leave. And I, because I have a new deck talking to heaven. So I thought it was kind of appropriate since we were talking about the afterlife. If you don't mind, I thought maybe we could pull a card. Sure. That'd be great. All right. Let's see what comes out. And remember, it's a general message. So if it resonates for you, that's great. So I love that. The card is, I am here helping you. So your loved ones want you to know that they are always here helping you in this lifetime. So keep talking to them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just ask them for, for some guidance and they will give it to you. Thank you so much, Rob, for being here today. Well, thank you, Melissa. It's been a, a, a joy and I, I look forward to joining you again in the future sometime. Absolutely. Come back anytime. I would love to have you. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us today as well. As always, if you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a positive review from wherever you're listening. You can follow me on social media or go to my website, melissaopen.com, to see everything that I offer. You can join us on Patreon. I hope you guys have a beautiful day from wherever you're listening. As always, I'm sending you so much love and light, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.